We talked to the guy with that yellow Primrose 1971 car, and this is the absolute truth. His accountant said that he spent over $50,000 storing that car. Good morning and welcome to Coffee Walk. I got a great one for you today. Uh, first off, I want to dedicate this to my incredible daughter which my wife and I are unbelievably proud of. She's 24 years old today. Yay! So I want you to watch her go and watch her grow at The Kelsey Cause on Instagram and Facebook. Now, it has been raining and thundering and lightning and tornadoes and stuff all around the Dallas area for the last, I don't know, 24, 48 hours. So we kind of struggled to get this coffee walk together, but I really wanted to do this one. So a big thanks to my guys for helping me get these cars set up in the shop. As you know, I talk in the past about wanted, dead or alive, I'll buy cars in any condition. We had a really good run on British cars. I'm excited about this. Let me show you what we found. So the first one we have here is a 1966 Series 1 E-Type Coupe. Now this car was sold new at Overseas Motors in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is really neat, so it's a local car. It's got a crazy story and a crazy history behind it. It has been parked in a garage since 1971. So, you do the math, quick math on that. Over 50 years this car's been parked. Now, this is a two plus two coupe. I'll start on that. You can see the roof, the door's longer. The roof line's a little bit longer. And what two plus two means is it's got a back seat in it. Now, the two plus twos have kind of been the redheaded stepchild of XKEs over the year, even though all E-types are desirable. This isn't the most desirable one. However, it is a Series 1 car, so there's a lot of things going on with these cars in the market right now. People are starting to do resto mods at them because it's a beautiful body style. The two-seat car is relatively easy to turn into a roadster because the base platform was a roadster. This is where the top will fold down in. And there's some guys out there, some very clever guys looking around that have chopped the tops on these and they look really, really cool. Now, when the owner got this one in 1971, he claims that the miles on it are actual, which they may very well be, showing 7,800 miles. This is a 4.2 liter automatic. He hated the automatic. Famous company in Dallas called John's Jaguars. They've been around forever. I remember in high school and I've been chasing these Jags forever, even bought some down there. He took the original motor out of this car, which is a 4.2 automatic, and traded it at John's for a 3.8, which is an earlier E-type motor, in a four-speed. So it's now got a 3.8 tri-carb with a four-speed in it and he changed the hanging pedal assembly. Now, that's as far as he got. This car has literally sat since 1971. I mean, look at this. The title is even 1971. It's a local car. Now there's endless possibilities for this car. It's gonna be priced cheap enough that you can do any of the three things that I recommended or just go your own way, get it running, drive it, enjoy it as is. Next, we have another car that was sold new locally. It was really neat on this is the title to this car is from 1983 and the bank that financed it was Canyon Creek National Bank which no longer exists but that was the first place I had a bank account where I used to deposit my paper route money so enough of that this is a 67 coupe so when you say coupe and not two plus two it's just a two-seat car much much better looking lines and this is the one that everybody always uses a phrase Enzo Ferrari says the most beautiful car ever penned and or designed a lot of people would agree with that they are stunning over the last 10 years, the coupe has actually taken over from the Roadster. In my opinion, the coupes are now more valuable than Roadsters, and I think a lot of people will agree with that. Not everybody. And what's unusual about this car is, again, it is a Series 1 car. So these have got dual latches on them if you ever walk up to them. You get in here to the wheelhouse, you, you unlock it, and you pull it back. you got to do this on both sides, so it'll take a second to get the hood open. Now, for those of you into Jags, you've already noticed in, your, in the background saying, oh... Doesn't look like it's a Series 1. Well, it is. This car still has its original head and tricarb set up, but the bottom end of the motor was replaced at some point in time. What's really neat about this car, 67, the Series 1 cars, a lot of people, that's the most desirable one for them because that's when all the updates are done, all the mechanical upgrades, all the bugs have been worked out. They just run and drive fantastic, beautiful looking cars, and they're fast. But what happened when they switched to a Series 1 and a half, they went to this bonnet which is an open headlight bonnet, which a lot of people don't like, versus a closed headlight bonnet. Now, this is a 67 Series 1 and a quarter. Yes, JCNA now recognizes Series 1 and a quarter. 
What that is, is this was a 67 Series 1 car, but it's got a, a Series 1 and a half bonnet on it. Now, if that just drives you bananas, there are kits out there to convert to a closed headlight. But what's neat about this is there are only 470 of these ever built, and according to xkedata.com, there's less than 150 of them known to exist. Really a neat car. It was originally primrose yellow, tobacco interior. It does need to be restored, but it is so worth the effort to restore this car. If you look at the final numbers on a fully restored coupe, they are very, very expensive. Also kind of neat, the license plate on this car, Jim's Jag, the spares in it. And if you look through the window, which I should open the hatch, you got the full tool kit, the Thor hammer, and the jack. So a very, very complete car, only missing a couple of pieces of trim. Next on to one of my most favorite cars, and you all know that, are the big Heelys. So in the last 30 days, which is incredibly unusual, I have found three BJ8 Austin Heelys and bought them. And talk about dead or alive, we have three very, very different conditions. This particular 67 BJ8 was owned by the same owner since 1968, and he was a BMC certified mechanic which is British Motor Corporation. He was certified on Austin Healey's, Triumphs, MGs, and other British cars. What I really like about this car, it's unrestored. I would call this car worn in, but not worn out. It runs and drives fantastic. It's one of those cars you get in and it fits you like a glove. It just goes down the road right, and this guy just always kept this thing in really, really excellent mechanical tune condition. Now the paint over time has suffered some nicks and bruises and starting to craze and crack, but what a really cool car. If you just want a big Healy to enjoy, this car is ready to go and ready to enjoy. Next we have a rotisserie restored BJ8. This is a 1966. Now this was done by an enthusiast at his house. We have pictures of it all the way down to the bare chassis. He picked his own color, it's a custom blue color. He also did a custom interior, kind of a cognac leather if you will. Wilton wool style carpet, more of a German style carpet, but a really, really nicely done, well turned out car that runs and drives fantastic. Let me show you under the hood. Now, if you ever hunt one of these cars and you're trying to sell it to me, you want to know how to open the hood. If you reach under the passenger side of the dash or you look underneath it, there is a rod that literally looks like a coat hanger that came out and is bent in a circle. It's crazy, but that's what they did. And then you've got twin hood catches on either side. You squeeze those in. And lift it up. So beautiful engine bay in this car. Again, this is a 1966, which for mo all, all intents and purposes is basically the same as the 67. Last but not least, in our wanted dead or alive, this car right here is dead, but it's a special car. So when you walk up to a BJ8, normally the way that you know if it's a late model BJ8, especially a, a Series 3 car, which is going to be called a Mark III, you're going to see the four lights up front. That's kind of a dead giveaway. Now, if it's going to be a very, very last of the series, like this Jag was a very last of the series, one of the last 470s, that's why it's such a special coupe, we go to the 67 BJ8. When you walk up to the car, you see it's got octagonal knockoffs on it. So the ear knockoffs were not legal anymore. So you knew this car could have come in in the 1968 time frame, and in fact, this car was sold in 1968. This car has been in a garage in New Jersey since 1971. So it's got a 71 inspection sticker and a 71 New Jersey plate. It's an old English white car, red interior, and yes, it needs to be restored, but it's another car that we rescued and we love rescuing cars. So we got two Jags rescued, we got this Healy rescued, and got the other two bots. So we've got all three different types on the market. Now this car is gonna need full restoration, but it is one of the last thousand cars built. And also when you look under the hood of these, all the other Heelys from 106 all the way up, the tags are square. You know, your VIN, your VIN plate tag. Now if you go to one of the last thousand cars, which is just really cool, is the tag is oval. Not a big deal. But the reason this car was sidelined since 1971 was it had a radiator problem. Took the radiator out to have it record, never got it back. Got shoved in and out of the house, on the side of the house, the barn, what have you, but we rescued another one. So there you go. Two E-types rescued, three BJ8 Heelys. We buy them dead or alive. If you've got something like this and you want rescued, go to social at cbjeep.com and send us your lead. And remember, 
We talked to the guy with that yellow Primrose 1971 car, and this is the absolute truth. His accountant said that he spent over $50,000 storing that car. So get out of your garage, get out of your barn, call us, we'll yank it out of the field, whatever you have. Have a great day.